Generation Iron app on Google Play and the App Store. Welcome to another episode of King's World. Okay, so last week I gave out my back workout and I got tremendous response back from a lot of you guys. You, you said it was a great show. It was very informative. A lot of you actually went out and tried the workout and said it was off the charts. So what are we going to do this week? We're going to talk about the second most requested body part that I've been getting from a lot of you guys, which is shoulders. All right, so... This time, again, another one of my own personal routines, how to build big, massive, barn door wide shoulders. Let's go. I always like to start out with seated hammer strength shoulder presses. Um, it's a warm up for me. That machine is just a plain warm up. So what I do is I put 245s on each side and just one arm at a time start repping them out just to get some blood flow going. Remember, shoulder injuries, you're done. Can't do anything. If you mess up your rotator cuff, you can just call it quits right there and then because the sur surgeries, the pain, the anguish, all the nonsense that comes with it, take some time, warm up a little bit, and always, like I do, I always put a little biofreeze on all my joints before I start my workout. So, hammer strength, Shoulder presses, one arm at a time, or you want to go with double arms, it really doesn't matter. Warm up, four sets of 20. Okay, now, shoulders are warmed up. We're going to go into standing military presses. Some people like to do it free weights. Some people like to do it with a Smith machine. You know what? It's really hard for taller guys to get into the Smith machine. Because why? Because you're going to hit. You know, just don't have that range of motion. So they got to go with free weights. But myself, personally, I can use the Smith machine because I'm only 5'10". And sometimes I like to go free weights too. So, heavy what I do is I go up to 225, get it, boom, explode. Come down in a controlled fashion right when it hits the bottom of my chin or right at the top of my chest, I explode back up again. Always, always, always have a training partner standing behind you just in case and to push you through the forced reps. Four sets of 15, heavy standing military presses. Next exercise, standing side lateral drop sets. Um, I like to start out with the 50 pounds, drop to the 40 pounds, drop to the 30 pounds. 10 reps, boom, drop, 10, 10. So it's 10, 10, and 10, total of 30 reps. Now here's the key. A lot of you people I see like to keep your elbows bent. That's fine and dandy, but you have to take out the traps. When you bend your elbows, you have a tendency to start putting in your traps. This exercise is for the caps, it's for the side of the shoulders, standing side laterals. What you want to do is you want to keep your arms as straight as you possibly can. Come up, right when it gets to here, you want to keep your traps down. Keep it all delts. So instead of doing this, which is more traps, you want to do this. Keep your traps down, concentrate on your side delts. Double drops, 10, 10, 10. Burn it and you'll feel it. Then we move on to the front delts. Okay, I like to flip it around. There's three basic exercises that I do for this body part. Number one, dumbbell front raises. You can do them alternating or you can do them both at the same time. The key, keep the dumbbells together, come all the way to eye level. Sometimes I like to go in there and do barbell. Get in there with the barbell. Again, eye level, concentrate on the front delts. Try to keep your arms locked. Not completely locked out, but just slightly bent right there. Go up to eye level. And then the third one, the plate. Put my hands through the plates, bring the plates up. I, used to, I, used, I like to use two 45-pound plates. Boom, boom. Four sets on this exercise. If you're going super heavy, 20. If you come back on the weight just a little bit, rep it out a little bit more, 30 reps. Again, volume, get blood in there, eye level, squeeze. Next exercise is the bent side laterals or flipping around. Sometimes I like to do the reverse pec deck for the rear delts. A lot of people neglect the rear delts. Folks, if you're a competitor and you're standing on stage and you do any of the side shots, if you have a nice prominent front and side delt and no rear delt, you look stupid on stage. Concentrate, put just as much focus on the rear delts as you do on the other parts of the shoulders. So, bend side laterals, you can do this any way you like. Again, remember how I keep saying the same thing over and over again, 
as far as last week goes, this week, it doesn't matter. It's all about the feel. Bodybuilding is about the feel. If you do a dumbbell curl and you feel it like this more than you feel it like this, then do it that way. It's about feel. Everybody's different. All the structures are different. So bend side laterals. Some people like to sit on the bench, bend over, keep the chest on the, on the thighs, come up and squeeze. Personally, I like to put my head against the bench, get down, grab the dumbbells, come up and squeeze. Again, some people like to turn them out like this. Some people like to turn them like this. For me, coming straight up, I feel it right in the rear delts. I feel a massive pump. If not that exercise, sometimes I like to do the reverse pec tech. Get in there, face against the pad. Of course, always put a towel because that's disgusting. Grab it, boom, come back. When you can't, you really can't go heavy on this exercise. What you need to do is get your training partner to stand behind you, put their hands right in between your forearms and start pushing you back to get those last extra four to five reps. It's those forced reps that will make you grow. Think, feel, and bodybuilding. A finisher for the shoulders, jabs. Not too many people do this. I do it. I recommend all my clients to do it. It is an absolute burner killer final exercise when it comes to delts. One arm forward, one arm back, grab the 20, 30 pound dumbbells and start jabbing. You wanna keep this one close to the body and just start jabbing. If you stand in front of a mirror, jab, jab straight to your face. 40 times after all those exercises, believe me folks, I don't care how strong and how tough you are, your arms are gonna feel like they're about to pop off. 40 this side, 40 this side, four sets. That's shoulders. Once you finish with the shoulders, you cannot neglect the traps. You have to do the traps. Nothing looks worse. I mean, I gotta love you. Everybody loves Kai Green. Kai, Kai, one of the greatest. He's gonna down down one of the Hall of Famers. The man, he's got no traps. I mean, if I was Kai, I'd be doing traps every other day as heavy as I can to try to get that to catch up with everything else. He needs that look. The, the traps touching the ears look. That will make his upper body even more complete than it is. Put Kai aside. Traps. Two exercises, dumbbell shrugs or barbell shrugs. Now, with the barbell shrugs, you can either do it from the front and you go a lot heavy, really, really heavy from the front. Mistake a lot of people make with the shrugs is they like to roll their shoulders forward and back. That's not gonna do it. That's not how you do it. You gotta come explode straight up, come straight down. Explode straight up, straight down. That's how you do the traps. You can also do it from behind. Who made this exercise famous? The great Lee Haney. That works more for the back, almost yeah, the back of the neck, not necessarily from the traps from the front. Again, hips forward, you come back. Very difficult, very, very difficult exercise. Or grab the dumbbells, same concept. Hold it to your side, boom, explode up, down. It's the explosion. Four sets of 20, you get those killer mountain traps. Okay, so now we're to the three questions. Question number one this week comes from Iron Tommy 10. Iron Tommy says or asks, how do I make my stubborn calves grow? Okay, I went through the same problem. Calves are a genetic muscle. There's two muscles on the human body that are purely genetics, biceps and calves. You either got them or you got to kill yourself to get them. How many people, how many times have you guys walked down the street, seen some guy, skinny, dorky, but humongous calves walking down the street? Genetics. It's a purely genetic muscle. If you don't have it, you have to kill it. Through my experience, what worked the best and it added the most size and definition for my calves was death presses. I learned this from one of my earliest training partners. He, he rest in peace, Jim Bryant. Get on the leg press machine, make sure the safety locks are on. So just in case you got a rack, you can just let it go. It's going to rack without breaking your shins, what you want to do is go and pulse. Boom, two, three, four, five, six, like that. Um, use a relatively heavy weight. I would say about three to four plates on each side. Remember, this is on the leg press. And here's the key, 100 reps, nonstop at a fast pace. One, two, three, four, five, six, like that. Once you get to about 50, to 60, you're gonna feel like there's a blowtorch on your calves. It is the most intense, excruciating pain you will feel, but you will get used to it. It's gonna get better and better as your muscles adapt to that type of pain and lactic acid. Keep it going, 100 reps, four sets, your calves will grow. Question number two comes from Mel is the one. Okay, Mel, Mel asks, when should one cut out shakes before a show? Great question. Well. I'm going to tell you what I tell all my clients. Shakes 
All the bars, all the artificial and all that nonsense stops at one week out. Why? Because you have to let your body adapt to the food. All those shakes and all those protein bars and all those drinks and pre-workouts and all that stuff, folks, those are all chemicals. It's loaded and loaded, loaded with chemicals. Those things react weird with the body. You want to last week before a show, take all of that crap out and just go for strictly organic food. Food, something that your body, you know exactly how your body will respond to. Shakes, one week, out. Question number three comes from Corey1157. Question is, King, if you had to choose three SARMs, which ones would you choose? Okay, Corey, we've already had a show and we had a whole show on SARMs, and you know, some people classify them as SARMs, some people don't. You know, it's just a little weird. I just say SARMs because I put them all together into one category. I will repeat them again, the three that I would say are the best, then it's up to you to do the research and find out if they're right for you. Number one will be YK11, number two is Ostrin, and number three is MK677. These are the three that I recommend. Now, Without getting into too much crap, without getting into too much uh, how to, I, I'm not going to give you doses. I'm not going to tell you what, how to do it and all that stuff. You go and do your research. But what I would say is I have experimented on myself and I've told my clients to use them. They've done their research and they said, okay, I've seen tremendous results, especially with the women when they take these three. It's just, um, it's like getting on gear for them. It's crazy how they respond and add lean muscle, get hard in the whole nine yards. So those are the three that I recommend. Uh, again, that was another show. Thank you guys. I love you very much. Um, there's so much more coming. Remember, I told you about those two amazing interviews. They'll be coming very soon. And as for now, I would like to say peace. Make sure you guys are taking care of yourselves. This is the, the time that the weather's changing. Everybody's getting sick. Take care of yourselves. Make sure you got plenty of antioxidants in your system. And as always, peace, bitches.